Our bid aims to do two things. First of all, to prove that this is a viable technology that when linked together, so that's capture, transportation and storage, can work. On the bigger level, I think this provides the UK with an opportunity to be at the forefront of developing a crucial technology. Skills and insights which we can export around the world to help all the other fossil fuel plants. The different elements of carbon capture and storage have been proven to work. Um, if you question specifically about the storage and, and whether or not storage will work, there's been a scheme in operation in the North Sea for I think 12 years now at a place called Sleipner where um, a company's been injecting a million tonnes per year of CO2 into um, an aquifer, an underground aquifer in the North Sea and, and that CO2 has been proven to be safely stored in that. At the moment the, the, the chemicals involved require a lot of energy to, to release the CO2 from the amine and um, we have, we have projects ongoing, we're involved in collaborative arrangements to try and reduce the amount of energy that the aiming requires and make carbon capture a commercial and viable uh, technique for, uh, for emission abatement. There may come a time, one day in the future, where we're able to generate all our electricity needs without burning anything. But the reality at the moment is that we need fossil fuel generation, so we can't live without it, but going forward we can't live with it unless we can take the CO2 out of it. I think as a power company that interestingly has both renewable energy resources but also coal, coal fired energy, it's, it's at the cutting edge really or the cold face of where climate change policy is going to hit and where the need to take action is. And Scottish Power seems to have taken a very strategic view that if it wants to be a leader, leading power company in what remains of the 21st century in a carbon constrained world then it needs to diversify into renewable energy, into carbon capture and storage and it's obviously done this from a strategic perspective, not from a window dressing or a let's cut a few emissions at the margins, and that, that's absolutely to be, to be praised. Uh, WWF is obviously very interested in Scotland's emissions and uh, general UK emissions as well. The power sector is a very important sector in terms of the emissions from the country. It's the biggest sector of emissions, and so it's one we have to take a strong interest in. And so we're interested in anything that potentially is going to save emissions and also have a, a, a wider impact across the world. And CCS is potentially one of those technologies, could be very important for Scotland, could be extremely important elsewhere in the world. So very interested to be engaged with the project to see what's planned, how it's going, how quickly we can get it going and where it goes beyond these shores as well. In delivering a full scale, full chain CCS project that covers the power plant, the capture plant, the transportation system and the storage facility requires quite a broad mix of skills that no one organisation has in house. We focused our efforts on bringing together a number of world class organisations uh, to the point where we now have what we believe is the strongest consortium, uh, the most compelling technical and commercial bid and uh, really a, a, an amalgam of uh, the best possible skill and financial resource to deliver this project. And the idea there is to have an end-to-end -end chain for this whole process. So we've got the power station, we're producing the emissions. Uh, ACAR are going to have the mobile test unit and all the fancy chemistry that helps us strip out the carbon. National Grid are going to transport it. National Grid Transco, who've got all the gas pipelines in the UK, very expert in that area. And finally Shell, I've got expertise in exploration. So they're going to help us store it. So you can see with the choice of partners, we've got a full end-to-end -end chain. So we're very excited about that and we believe we're, we've got the best offering now to the government as part of the competition. The consortium essentially is, is a partnership of, of, that share the same vision, the same outlook and are leaders in their field. So ACAR are the leaders in, in carbon capture, uh, National Grid obviously are, are uh, the leaders in transportation and Shell, while well, the name speaks for itself in terms of their lead in, in ENP in the North Sea. I guess the key challenge is uh, retrofitting um, a, a large process into an existing power station site, um, how we basically interface with the, the existing operations, um, how we do that efficiently, how we minimise the impact on, on, on operations in, in those types of areas. Those are where the biggest challenges are. Working with, with ACA, who are the, who are the technology providers, they actually provide uh, the, the carbon capture technology. They've, they've developed a, a product which, which is very suitable for, uh, for, for our application in the government competition. It's been a really fruitful project for us to get the, the take of the NGOs and to try and bring them on board by explaining that actually what we want to do is demonstrate this now on a retrofit scheme. We're 
the Long Island Power Station is currently putting CO2 out into the atmosphere anyway, so anything that we can do to improve those CO2 emissions is, is going to be a really positive thing. Of course, uh, Scottish Power is one of Scotland's big polluters. It's also one of the big solution providers because it's a very big wind power developer. So uh, we've been very keen to talk to the company over the years, as with other energy companies, to talk about what they're doing, whether we think it's good, whether we think it's bad. In terms of the CCS project, we've been uh, aware of it for quite some time and enthusiastic about the idea of a trial here. Looking at the entries in the competition around the UK, it seems very clear to us that the obvious thing to do is to fit uh, a CCS trial onto a plant that exists. Because if you do that, even if you only cover a fraction of the emissions, you have reduced the emissions of the plant. If you build a new station, which has some fraction covered by CCS, well, OK, you've captured some, but the rest of it is all new emissions. So it's pretty obvious. Common sense would say, go to an existing station and do it there. And uh, Long Annet, of course, is the only existing station in the competition at the moment, so Long Annet is the obvious choice. And we're pretty frustrated that it's taking such a long time for government to decide where to put this first investment, because to us, it's very obvious that Long Annet is the place to go. We have entered this competition saying that we can take out 330 megawatts and we can have that up and running by 2014. As we progress through this trial, and that's the reason why we have the mobile test unit in place, it allows us to start to uh, learn and, and for our partners, um, ACA Technology, to learn about the carbon capture and processing uh, part of this so that they in turn are then able to scale up the unit so that we're able to come back and, and meet the time commitments that we made. The fact that Scottish Power has decided to um, get the MTU up and running to start doing the testing before the results of the UK competition are known suggests that yes it is a, something that has been taken seriously and that it is of strategic importance. Obviously, and I think this is true for any company involved, involved in CCS, at the moment some form of government subsidy or government policy that provides the funding for the incremental costs is essential. It's, there's no commercial reason in the short term to do it without that government subsidy. But the fact that Scottish Power are making in some investment without knowing the outcome of the competition suggests a, a longer term strategy which says, yes, this is going to be part of what we do now and in the future. One of the great things that's come out of the work that we've been doing on CCS in the last year, year and a half, is that we are beginning to establish these relationships and establish those dialogues and we're able to kind of find solutions together that maybe is not going to let everybody go home completely happy but we're finding a kind of compromise that you know we're going to be able to continue to produce energy and provide it for our customers and we're also going to be able to improve the environment which is a win-win for everyone. I mean it is a very exciting project, it's, it's leading edge and people like to be in a team that's first. Now carbon capture is being done around the world but not, not like this, not, not, not on this scale, uh, not necessarily with coal. So yeah, I mean uh, my team and the team supporting it, the wider team supporting it, and there's a huge team supporting, uh, are just fantastic, we're just really excited to be first. Uh, it's leading edge technology and if we're successful, and we believe we will be, we're going to have a global impact. Uh, just to put it in perspective again, this plant uh, behind me is uh, 2,000 megawatts. There's a plant long on its size being built in China every week. So that uh, scale probably says it all. We need to make sure these plants that are being built today and the future can cope with the carbon emissions. We really do feel as though we're, we're, we're groundbreaking. We're, we're doing things which um, which nobody else has, has, has actually done before. We've got we're generating information which is which is unique. And as part of the demo competition. Um, we'll be able to share that information with, with other people who are, who are in a similar situation to, to, to where we were. We are quite open about sharing the experience and the understanding that we have here because this is a global challenge. There are tens of thousands of existing fossil fuel plants around the world. Is there anything that we can learn about the carbon capture, transportation and storage at Longanit during this trial? We want to share with others so that we can all improve our knowledge and do something about reducing CO2 in the atmosphere.